I was just looking through my list of how I catalog my YouTube videos and I realized that I didn't have a place to put this. I thought that I guess I read more sociology and anthropology than I actually do because this ends up being the first book about social sciences and I didn't have anywhere to put it. Looks like I might have to create a new video group for it. But um, I've always liked sociology and anthropology and um, I'll probably end up reviewing a few more books about those topics in the, in the near future. But this is one I wanted to show everyone. It's called uh, Cows, Pigs, Wars, and Witches, The Riddles of Culture by Marvin Harris. Uh, civilizations, uh, even the most advanced among them, are invariably strewn with mythologies and folklore and, and weird taboos. And while contemporary American culture would itself provide enough material for a multi-volume study of something like this, Marvin Harris uh, in this book focuses mostly on pre-scientific and pre-literate peoples to answer questions like, why do Hindus eat, uh, excuse me, why do Hindus not eat cows while Jews avoid pork instead? And how do you explain the concept of the Messiah? How does that historically arise? And why was the belief in witches in medieval Europe so prevalent? And why were, why were people so afraid of them? These bald facts have received uh, a lot of anthropological and sociological explanations in the past, including the one that suggests that they're simply irreducible and therefore unable to be analyzed. But Harris, who, especially in this book, strikes me as maybe not an orthodox Marxist, but certainly a, a thoroughgoing materialist, necessarily uh, looks for materialistic and material explanations in culture and in society. He looks for answers to questions in the everyday lives and concerns of people that entertain these beliefs. And because of this, his answers, in most instances, seem to have a bit more explanatory, explanatory force than than those that don't. According to Harris, the reason why we see Hindu cow love, those are his words, not mine. I, I found that expression a little derogatory for some reason, but that's what he calls it. The reason why we see cow love as odd is because we live in a very fundamentally different position with respect to cows in our own day-to-day post-industrial lives. No matter the exigencies or problems in the lives of the market or our family, we can always go to the grocery store and purchase milk or butter and meat, all from a cow. However, Hindus, and he's mostly talking about Indian Hindus here, especially uh, Hindus from centuries past, uh, have acquired the need for an adaptive resilience in its agricultural order that we have long since shed our need for. Hundreds of millions of Indian peasants who have, who have only one cow know that that animal is the only source of milk to make it through a dry season. And if they're lucky enough to make it, and of course, uh, especially in, in times of drought and, and, and famine, many of them didn't, it's the only thing that can pull a plow once it's time to plant or harvest crops. So in short, because of the way that their economy is localized around the family unit instead of our, what I guess you might call the Western food industrial complex, they place a different value on the cow. Of course, that's, that's uh, an explanation, as I said, that's about as materialist as it gets. And it's very much centered on the the real circumstances of the society and the culture. Another topic Harris considers is the first century Palestinian Judaism and its concomitant idea of messianism and the, the, the Messiah. Uh, the history of this period, uh, mainly through Josephus' two reliable books, uh, the first of which is called Jewish Antiquities, and the second of which is called Bellum Judaicum, 
or the Jewish wars, uh, informs us that Jesus was not unique in having the mantle of the Messiah. Between about 40 BC and 73 AD, Harris mentions uh, Anthron Gaius, uh, Thutis, who was an anonymous scoundrel executed by Felix, and a Jewish Egyptian false prophet and uh, a man by the name of Manahem, M-A-N-A-H-E-M. Josephus was so used to this political uh, apocalypticism that there was uh, even more of these figures that he doesn't even bother to name. A long line of Jews fashioned themselves as restorers of the Jewish state and wished to free it from the caprice of Roman satraps, with Jesus and John the Baptist being the two whose names have mostly survived the ravages of history, even though there are others if you want to go read the primary sources. Harris's explanation of witchcraft is appealingly commonsensical. During the Middle Ages, witchcraft was not especially looked highly upon, and it was almost never considered heretical. Over time, the church found that they could use these beliefs to scapegoat natural events like hailstorms and outbreaks of disease and crop failure and other ominous signs, therefore stopping people before they reached the heterodox conclusion that God might be involved in all of these negative circumstances too and not just the good ones. Instead of the Catholic Church wishing to root witches out of society, they used the common folkloric beliefs and sorcery to the Church's advantage. And by co-opting sorcery as a heresy, the Church was able to blame the evils of society on the more marginal lower members, while at the same time seeming to want to keep the Church and society pure. So uh, you kill the proverbial two birds with one stone. I can certainly appreciate the broad appeal a book like this has for non-specialists and non-scholars like myself. Uh, That having been said, if I could change one thing about the book, it would be that Harris has taken uh, a bit of a less flippant approach and more fully fleshed out some of his sources. As you can tell by the title, uh, Cows, Pigs, Wars, and Witches, he focuses on a lot of problems, uh, or I, I should say a lot of questions. The question of witchcraft, the question of, you know, the historical idea of a, of a messiah, you know, why Hindus don't eat cows and why Jews don't eat pork. I mean, s- some books have taken up just one of those questions and spent twice the number of pages on it. Um, so he goes through these ideas kind of quest- kind of quickly and sometimes doesn't flesh them out as well as I would have liked. And... Uh, as I said before, off-the-cuff expressions like cow love and pig hate, which uh, he also uses, really tend to draw away from the authority that I think his his work might otherwise appreciate. But um, some interesting ideas in here nonetheless, really um, well-grounded materialist explanations of culture, a good, a good synthesis of, of sociology and anthropology. Cows, Pigs, Wars, and Witches, The Riddles of Culture by Marvin Harris.